Hi, everybody. This week, we're going to have a conversation with Peter. Peter, take a second to say hello to the audience. Hey, audience. Hey, well, well welcome to the show. Uh, let's just kick it off with the famous one word open. I always start off with asking every, every guest that I interview, what's your one word you want to open up with? Open with data. Data. Cool. Tell us about your business. Take the next few minutes. Tell us how you got started, your aha moment, uh, inception to today. Sure. So um, the aha moment is actually an aha set of like uh, decades. So first of all, you know, Dan and I, uh, my co-founder, have been friends for uh, over 20 years. And ultimately, what we decided to do was build ourselves as a service. So I work at Mozart Data. We're the easiest way to spin up a modern data stack. And uh, what we are is de facto data infrastructure uh, that anyone really can find accessible. So data infrastructure is this daunting concept. We make it very approachable. The idea is that you can get what, what's called the modern data stack up and running without any data engineers, and you can do it all in under an hour. Awesome. Talk, talk to us about the pandemic, how it impacted you and how you pivoted out to you know, continue to have your growth. Well, actually, you know, we are a pandemic company, so there, there was no Mozart before the pandemic, but the pandemic is a key part of our story. So um, Dan and I actually uh, wanted to work together uh, because of the pandemic, which is to say we had a really long history with one another. So, you know, the pandemic really forced a few of our hands. You know, we're a remote first, remote always company, and that is a function of being, you know, born in April of 2020. Um, now, most of our earliest employees were people that we've worked with in the past. And that's because, you know, without the sort of office environment, you don't have those sort of really special walking by moments where you pick up on something that someone from a totally different department is doing. Um, so we had to really rely on past relationships to get the shorthand of our working styles uh, to essentially, because there is no office, um, we had to essentially do that cheat. That's really cool. I, I don't think I've ever interviewed someone that was, a, you know, uh, started during the pandemic. Uh, and also, we, I love what you said, you're remote based and remote, remote first company. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. All right. <clears throat> we do have Tell a big about... presence in the Bay. So, you know, I think while we're remote first and remote always, um, you know, Dan and I are both based in uh, the Bay Area, myself in San Francisco, Dan in Oakland, and we've sort of always sort of wanted to have this sort of real company office culture. Um, but like basically, again, the pandemic forced our hand into making it uh, dispersed across the country. Awesome. Can you tell us about a big win that you put on the board for Q1? Sure. I mean, you know, all of our wins are, are customer centric. So, um, you know, they, they tend to be more about an analysis that a customer does. So very rarely is it, uh, you know, something that, that we did, you know, we, we build a tool that empowers customers. And so often the wins that we share, and we have a bunch of case studies are really about operators building data infrastructure and not just building data infrastructure, doing it better than a vast vast majority of technology companies. So uh, what typically we talk about is an operator that is accessing data, that is you know, picking up SQL and manipulating data um, and you know, doing things that used to be based, you know, queued up uh, by engineering. So really an operator substituting out for an engineer. Got it. And can you think about a time where you had something that didn't go so well and how did you pivot out of that? Sure, I mean, we have, Many of those at Mozart, but I, you know, I'd highlight on sort of a past one. So, um, you know, my head of sales and I worked together at a company called Zenefits. Um, Zenefits was, you know, um, a company that had rocket ship success followed by rocket ship struggles. And, uh, you know, the learnings there, and I think they're actually really relevant to today's market, which is you really can't get over your ski tips. You have to sort of grow in accordance with your product market fit. You really can't like outkick your coverage and, and overspend, you have to, um, you know, invest in the, in the products that, that people care about, you know, sort of to go on a YC trope, you know, Dan and I, uh, you know, when we got started, we did Y Combinator and, you know, there's a trope, which is, you know, make something people want. And uh, you, you really have to do that, especially now in these days. Um, and you really shouldn't be sort of over investing in growth that that's not coming from a market pull. Can you share your point of view on thought leadership with me? 
Yeah, I think a, a couple of things. Um, one, um, I think there's there's components of thought leadership, uh, like, and I just you know shared uh, you know sort of a YC trope that are just sort of uh, recycling uh, other really great opinions, and then and and I do it all the time, which is I think that you know I I you know we raised money from from Kraft, and I had worked previously um, with. Uh, you know, David Sachs was my boss twice, both at Yammer and at Zenefits. So I do like to kind of almost, you know, have part of my philosophy be recycled from the learnings from those incredible rocket ship companies um, and, and, and leaders. Um, and then the, the flip of that is that you do have to make it your own. So we have a company core value called uh, Kyle Singler. So I went to Duke. I'm a big Duke basketball fan. Kyle Singler uh, was a Duke basketball legend. Uh, and he was a legend because he played all five positions on the court. And they asked Coach K, what position does Kyle Singler play? And Coach K said he plays the position winner. So, mm -hmm. so typically you see startups and, you know, this a, a YC mantra is sort of do everything, cockroach, you know, the CEO is the janitor as well as the CEO. Um, and, you know, our version of that we call Kyle Singler. Uh, now, is that thefted from, you know, YC or Paul Graham or whomever? The answer is yes and no, it's inspired, right? So I do think um, one of my general takes is you have to put your own spin on that advice. And, and you know, for us, a lot of it has to do with who Dan and I are authentically as people. That's really cool. And can you also share uh, your point of view on culture with me? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, culture is really evolving. So I, I, I will say when we started, um, we had a culture that was just 100% dominated by the way Dan and I wanted to work, uh, you know, together, that we wanted to develop product <clears throat> that we that we wanted to, um, you know, uh, sort of see the world and how we what what environment we liked working in that got the best out of us. As our company has grown to from two people to three people to five people to ten people to twenty people, um, as our company has scaled, you know, to over ten x the founders, um, that that company culture sort of it's sort of like a photocopy machine. If you if you try to enforce the core values that you had um, at the start of your company, what you'll find is that it sort of gets blurrier and blurrier as you take, uh, you know copies of copies of copies. Instead, what you want to do is revisit company culture quarterly. And by that, I mean not change the core tenets and the core values, but um, actually get the new flavors from the whole entire company of what sort of those values mean to them and sort of adjust accordingly. So culture is really an evolving thing at Mozart. We have a couple of the the core ones like like Kyle Singler that sort of get us through. Um, but you know, beyond that, we really want um, all of the employees to have a say in kind of what our company culture looks like. That's really cool, Peter. Um, can you give us a, a high level overview of like the typical company you help? You know, like what is your sweet spot if you have one? And also what pain points are they dealing with on a daily basis that would make sense for them to reach out to you guys? So, I mean, in all, you know, the Mozart sort of uh, NASCAR page looks incredible. It's uh, B2B companies, B2C companies, DTC companies, small two-person companies that were in our YC batch, all the way up to unicorns, decacorns. So there's a giant range. So our ICP is sort of a little bit undefined by classic dimensions. Um, what the consistent thing is that they're all sort of at the starting point of their getting serious about data journey. So, you know, a typical company is very similar to ours. You know, we have a product that works really great for us. So we're a series A company uh, with 20 people and generating a bunch of data. People are doing things with our product. We're doing advertising and growing. We have an operations team. So what you typically find at these types of companies is an operator that sort of knows what they want from their data. They know, okay, I want to make data-driven decisions. I want to optimize. Um, but what they don't have are necessarily the data engineering chops to get to get them there. And you know, sometimes companies are really later to that journey. We have companies that were you know Series C when they started with us, and then sometimes companies you know as soon as they get started really want to spin up a data warehouse. So you know, our ideal customer is somebody that's 
really wanting to use their data and are, is going to make an intentional investment in that data. And they're trying to sort of sift through the pieces that they'll need to do it. And we really help them get there. That's really cool. Thanks for giving us that detail and uh, insight into uh, exactly how and who you helped. That was really cool. So with that said, give us your social handles, uh, give us your website address in case people are listening, they want to find out more, they'll know how to find you. Awesome. So you know, our social, we're best reached at uh, mozartdata.com. You know, our social handles are pretty much all variants of uh, Mozart data. So on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Insta, even, uh, you know, probably even TikTok, I, you know, we're, we're always sort of uh, Mozart data. So um, really the idea is to effectively orchestrate your data, bring it all together. We, we love the bad puns. Uh, awesome, Peter. Give us your one more to close that you want to sign off with. I know you opened up with data. Here we are at the close. Give us what you're going to close with and tell us why you're choosing to close with this word. So challenge. Uh, and the, the reason is that I see, um, you know, startups is doing something really important in the world, which is solving other people's challenges. Um, but we ourselves face many. So I think sort of the theme of 2022 for me is sort of overcoming challenges. And, um, and, you know, I think it's a, a great word sort of, and by the way, one of the best ways to overcome challenges is to leverage data. So uh, hopefully that sort of ties it all together. Awesome, Peter. Thank you very much for this conversation. Absolutely.